Hello and welcome everybody to another modern video. We're going to ta be taking a look at an interesting amulet list this time around. And this is a list that actually won one of the modern challenges. We have four modern challenges now every weekend. And one of them was won by Gurig, who's a very uh, well-renowned amulet player from Japan. And they are only doing crazy stuff in, the de in their deck lists. And the, the newest one is the addition of Phyrexian Metamorph. Uh, granted, I made some changes for from the original list. The original list had uh, like four copies of Metamorph. It was not playing Azusa at all, which is I just I just cannot get behind that. Like Azusa is, is just so great as, as just a singleton copy. So uh, I did make a couple of changes from the original list. But um, there are a couple of uh, interesting changes that you don't really see every uh, everywhere. So, uh, first of all, we have the metamorphs over the explore. The idea here is uh, metamorphs can act as uh, extra copies of um, something like amulet. Obviously, that's like the main use. We can also have uh, redundant copies of primeval titan. So you can like play a titan even with a single amulet, and you can get like a bounce on it in any other land. And then you just play metamorph copy in the titan. That's also a nice thing. And this is also fantastic versus a deck like creativity or even a deck like scam right like if you if your opponent scams you with a fury and then just and tap and you drop a metamorph you kill the fury now you are actually kind of ahead at that point which is uh, it's also kind of like you can cast under blood moon which is very nice so metamorph has a bunch of different things going for it i don't know how i feel about cutting explore for it like that's the only thing that i'm not super high on but uh, but yeah, like the idea seems crazy enough to work, right? Uh, I'm also playing the full four copies of Gargans. Again, like the idea here is to maximize on amulets. So having access to to more uh, more amulets thanks to Gargans is nice. We also have Swansong in the sideboard and Gargans actually helps our mana fixing, our blue color mana fixing. So uh, that's another reason for playing more Gargans. Um, I'm not like super high overall on Micros and Gargans. In my regular list, I'm actually playing only three copies. But uh, I'm, I'm still, you know, go just every now and then when I have a deck list that actually feel like has a thought behind uh, playing four copies, I, I, I'll just go ahead and, and add the fourth one. Just try to make room for it. Uh, usually over the second copy of Balakut, as you can see here. I'm also playing the full four Cavern of Souls in the main game. This is something that Gurid was doing. Obviously, this is uh, mostly against um, the Merktide matchup, uh, of course. Uh, Merktide has uh, seen a very, very significant resurgence in the past uh, couple of weeks, so it, it's no surprise that Cavern is back to being fantastic. Uh, so, Swan Song, this member, uh, the single top of Tyranax Rex. The original list was playing two in the sideboard. I don't know how I feel about two of them. <laughs> two seems like a lot. Uh, maybe it should be a second copy of the, the Dino instead of the Tireless Tracker. I'm doing like a little bit of a split. It is definitely a thing that, you know, uh, once you have one Dino and you start dealing toxic damage, if this Rhino d does somehow get answered, which is not easy to answer with the Ward 4, of course, but if this one does somehow get answered, then having access to the second copy can allow you to like steal a toxic kill out of nowhere, which is nice, but I'm just doing one and one. Uh, one copy of Force of Vigor, uh, three copies of Endurances, uh, one Exigent Explosives, and then uh, Bossage number three, Bojuka Bog. And the unique card that you'll see here is the Stone Brain. Again, like, Creativity has established itself as, if not the best deck in the format, at least in the top three, right? So, um, the card like Stone Brain can be pretty clunky versus a deck like Killing It. Sure, you, you have access to it, you will still bring it in, right? Like, because sometimes your opponent may not have uh, the, the, the actual turn three cascade spell. But when you uh when you're planning a setting like creativity the stone brain becomes a lot more valuable because there's a lot more time like that extra one turn is the difference between being able to play the stone brain and activate it immediately versus like playing on turn two and just crossing your fingers that you don't get cascaded and then like and tapping again you know so uh the stone brain makes more sense now considering the new changes in the metagame uh, and it's a card that is it, since since it showed up, it's been interesting. It's been like on the verge of playability, and with the the format being a little bit more combo heavy right now, I think it makes sense to be to be revisited. That's gonna be it for the deck tech. We're gonna be playing one league in, in Magic Online. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. If you're interested in supporting my content, you can do so in a couple of different ways. First of all, whenever you use the services of Mana Traders or TCG Player, uh, whenever you use the links that you will find in the description of the video, you will uh, be supporting the stream directly without any extra cost to you. Uh, of course, if you uh, you can also find a 10% discount for Mana Traders code as well. 
And if you would like to support the stream, the contact directly, you can do so through a Patreon, through direct donations with any donation of $30 or more. I will play any decklist of your choice in, in one of my YouTube videos. And finally, uh, coaching. If you're interested in uh, taking coaching, your, your <laughs> sorry, your game to the next level, you can consider uh, booking a coaching session with me. And uh, that's it. We're going to see you for round number one. All right, what do we got here? Um, well, this hand looks pretty good. So we can go turn one, Gardens, Amulet, turn two. I guess we're just going to play a Dryad, and then we can win on turn three, potentially. Turn one, Monkey. I'd love to see that, seeing as Monkey is oftentimes accompanied by uh, a nasty card called Blood Moon, which I'm not a huge fan of. All right, what do you got, opponent? I imagine this is Scam. Cover of Souls, what I was exiled. Doesn't really matter. DRC into bubble. Always a scary combination. Wait, what? Tend the pests. It's additional cost, sacrifice a creature, create X11. One, one. Uh okay. That's not a card I was expecting to see. Um, yep, so we'll just I guess develop my mana here because I think it's pretty likely this dryad just dies, so having drawn the Vesuva is is fine. But I definitely want to be able to to just hit a land drop here. Next turn, I'm going to be able to copy Amulet. Then following turn, I can uh, cast these Cultivator Colossus with double Amulet. But yeah, well, I'm expecting a Fatal Push or something here. Yep, there you go. Unsurprising. Man, that is, uh, that is a card. So we're going to be taking five here. The, I think I play... Yeah, I, I actually have to play one more land. So we're going to be playing one more land. And then we're going to... We're going to spend our next turn copying Amulet. Bitter Union. Okay. So we just have to dodge Fotsy specifically, I guess, for two turns. But this is going to be eight damage, bringing me down to five. Ooh, Death Shadow? Oh, well, that's very lethal. Um, yep. I just drew blanks uh, this, this entire time, so I'm just dead. Dude, 10 the pests. Really? <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, well, this is very much lethal, so I think I just die. I'm trying to think if there's anything I can do. But I just copy the amulet and I just have access to 5 mana. So I'm, I'm still still a, well, a ways away. This can't really blow anything up. And allow me to survive. Yep, yeah, just die. Okay, next game. Uh, we like uh, this member. We like Engineered Explosives, and I think I do like Endurances. Metamorph is actually kind of interesting. I don't think I like Cultivator. I can cut a couple of Cavernous Souls. I think I like Bojugabog, though. I think I can cut one more Cavern. And could cut a Gardens or a Sire. I think I'm going to cut Gardens. Uh, Gracer's fantastic. Dryad's fine. Metamorph seems okay. Maybe Metamorph is just great. No, but my opponent's gonna have Fatal Pushes and stuff, so... Yeah, I think I'd, I'd rather just not have Metamorph. Mm, yep, this looks pretty good. Could cut Expedition Map. What do we have here? Uh, yep, this hand looks good. So I think I'm gonna go turn one... Yeah, I think I'm gonna go turn one Gardens, actually, as opposed to turn one Saga. Because I don't really have any rush to like get so i can get value on the way turn one drc less scary than turn one turn one monkey i think so now next turn i can just play Boseju, send it back uh oh okay so my opponent's got blood moon it's literally the only reason to go fetch a basic for a uh, basic swamp in there when they are playing like death shadow in their deck right so we know for a fact that my opponent's got blood moon going on which is Pretty bad for us. Uh, that's a bad draw. No, 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 I'm just drawing like garbage this this match. Land Moon? Opponent does have the land. Do they have the Blood Moon too? Or not? So it's kind of awkward that uh, I'm going to have 5 mana only on my next turn. Even if I draw a Gracer, I have only 8 mana. So I need to draw exactly a Susa or Summoner's Pact in order to cast the Titan next turn. Hard cast Monkey. Goif. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna make a dude here and tap another saga. I think I'm just making a dude here, finding my amulet and just playing another saga. Passing the turn, just slowly grinding out some value, just leaving the construct life. 
just living the construct life. It's also kind of nice that my Cassine Gardens can make my constructs grow if I want to. Go if he's a 5-6. Dismember one of my dudes. Uh, so this actually has... Yeah, so I guess I'm gonna take... I think I'm just trading with the Ragaman here. This is, I guess, 11. The next turn we go down to 2. Jesus. Engineer Explosives? Primeval Titan. Well, they tapped out, so I think I'm good here. So the line is gonna be Mycosin Gardens, copy Amulet, play Bounce Land. And I can only do this because I because I actually have Asusa. So make some mana. Summon respect for Asusa. Cast Asusa. And now we're gonna play Growth Chamber. And I guess I have to if I do yeah, I think I have that on me, so I'm, I think I should be good to go here. So we're gonna bounce, Seiju, whatever, transmute for Summoner Spact, Summoner Spact for Primeval Titan, play Bodos Garrison as my last land, float some mana. Uh, trying to think, because I'm gonna have one mana floating here. I'm trying to think if. So I can leave white mana floating. And I can find Balakut. So I'm gonna sing 16 minus 7, it's still 9, still lethal. Yeah, I think we're fine. I think we're fine. So cast prime time, white mana floating. I'm gonna say yes. Find Slayer Stronghold. Yeah, it's exactly lethal. I'm trying to, I was trying to think if there's any way I can sneak Bojuge Bog into the equation, but oh yeah, I can. I can just like go Vesuva. And then on combat, yeah, this is fine. So copy, Boros Garrison, uh, we're going to untap. I'm just over here overthinking things, when in reality my opponent is super, super dead. Bounce Boros, pass the turn, swing, and say yes. And I just go Sun Home plus Bojuki Bog, I guess. If I bog myself, it's better to bog my opponent because I they have land, instant, and enchantment. Yeah, so it's better to bog my opponent. Juga bog, you, and we have enough mana to double strike. Boom. Looks pretty good to me. Good block, opponent. Good block. Minus three. Perfect. Uh, game number three. Does Goif make me want to change things? I think I, I'm gonna play Bosseju instead of the Cavern of Souls. That's the only difference. Because like my opponent fetching for basics really tells me that it's it's just way too likely that they have access to Blood Moon if they're doing that. So just gonna have the extra Bosseju just to just to have it in hand. This hand seems very interesting actually. I think I'm gonna keep it. I think I'm gonna keep it. And I can just hard cast Endurance next turn if I want to, which is nice. I'm probably not going to, but I do have the option. Also, my opponent just thought sees me here and we just move on, but man, so many game actions. Opponent taking so many game actions and then traversing for a swamp. Gracer. Huh. Yeah, actually, you know what? I think I'm just gonna grace her and I'm just gonna put this Tolerary West in play. Oddly enough, I think that Gracer is more valuable than Amulet because Gracer allows me to like play around things while well, Amulet does not. Goif. It's a good draw. So let's remember that. And now play my Amulet and play my Gardens and say go. So I have five mana next turn if I want. DRC into the Swamp. Okay. So now I just get to just hard cast my Endurance. I also get to do that surprise, right? So I think I'm just gonna play out... What's the best way to go about this? Because if I transmute, I can't cast the Endurance and I think I kind of want to cast the Endurance. I think I just play out the Sun Home and I just pass the turn back. Like, this is also a sneaky Endurance. Like, it doesn't look like I have Endurance mana here, which is very cool. Terminate my Arboreal Gracer. Oh yeah, <laughs> this Endurance is gonna be money. This endurance is gonna be money. Okay, float some mana. Surprise! 
I mean, of course, my opponent can just have Blood Moon here and then the game ends, right? But but this is still pretty pretty cool. All right, second Terminate. It's good for me because it means my opponent used the Terminate. They used two Terminates to kill a Royal Gracer and a freaking and an Endurance. And now they thought sees me while I have nothing in hand that they can take. So things are going... Uh, things are looking up. Gracer. Ha. So I think that is lethal. Let's think about this. So we copy amulet, we use green, then we yeah, this is this is very very lethal. So copy that, play a growth chamber, float some mana, bounce, play this, float some more mana. Uh this is 7 8 9. I'm just going to have more more green sources in play. Summoner's Pact, Pact, Core Prime Time, Play Prime Time. Say yes. Borders Garrison, Slayer Stronghold. That was a good draw. It's a good, good crazy boy. That was a good crazy boy. Uh, do I wanna. Oh, I just double strike here. Duh. Yeah, this is. Oh, no, I. Yeah, I can't. I can't, can't, can't. Yeah, we're, we're good, we're good. So just bounce this, move to combat, swing. And I just find Vesuva to copy the Sun Home on like any land at all. I guess I'm gonna find Gardens so I can pay for Pact if I want to. Uh, copy Sun Home. Boom, 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 boom. One, and double strike, and take 16. Easy game, easy life. Just the casual turn four kill through double terminates, turn one DRC and Thoughties. To be fair, everything lined up perfectly for us. <laughs> but it's it's funny how how everything lined how how well for me everything lined up. But that was still pretty pretty hilarious. Game number two. Uh, this hand is a trap. Let's ship it. This hand is okay. I think this hand is fine. We just ship the primeval titan. I think I'm supposed to saga on two actually because if I go. Turn one, Saga, then on turn three it pops, but it actually does nothing for me. So I'd rather just have the Saga in play one more turn and just pop off on turn four with Dryad. And um, we, we can also, like, if we wanted to, we could make a Construct. But So we're going to play a Cavern on Beast and ship it back. This is only be because we have two Caverns, and if we draw a Gracer, we'd like to play it. Dark Slick Shores. Ha. Huh. I imagine that's bad news for us. Meaning Blue Black Mill? Consider. Interesting. Well, uh, I think I'm just gonna take it easy here. Just gonna play a Cavern on Giant and send it back. Like, there's no reason for me to, like, enable my opponent's cards, right? I guess they could be a combo deck, and if they are indeed a combo deck, then I kind of want to race, so it's better if they're actually a combo deck to play out the Dryad. Consider, and both times they kept. Thieves, Guild, Enforcer. <laughs> Milling double Metamorph. <laughs> I guess that just happened. So they do have the fetch to enable, to enable push. So we're gonna make a construct here. I think I actually wanna play it slow. I think we're making a construct. We untap, see what's up. We do have a Grazer, huh? Yeah, I think I'm just gonna make another Construct here. Put him Fetches in response for Water Grave. Oh, playing around Peeling Needle? Sure, it's an interesting thing to play around there, but I get it. Um, I mean, I guess I might as well serve. Here's three. Opponent takes it. Just gonna play this Grazer here. If my opponent wants to counter it, that's cool. I'm just gonna play this Cavern on Dryad. Opponent deep in the tank and then drowns in the lock a poor Arboreal Gracer. Yeah, I'm okay with this. So now these things are online, but like they're just three to death touchers. If my opponent doesn't have Surgical, I don't think I'm particularly afraid of anything. I guess Thoughtseize I would be afraid of. Okay, so those dudes come in. Let's play a Cavern on Dryad. And now I guess I don't have to race anymore. Just play this Dryad over here and play Growth Chamber. If my opponent kills the Dryad in response or something like that, we can just cast a Prime Time. 
uh, we just chill here. We just hang out. Blue Blue, Fairy Mastermind. Okay. I mean, those are three of my primeval titans gone. <laughs> Dude, whenever I put in draws their second card each turn, you draw a card. Okay. Okay. Yuta Takahashi, Work Champion 27. That's so cool. Just, just put it there. Just put it in the flavor text. That's so badass. Damn. Yuya is the man. Uh, Yuta is the man. Yuya is very much not. <laughs> not anymore, at least. So if one of us did trade, I just trade with one of these. Leave the dryad in play, just forces my opponent to answer the dryad. Uh, sh sure. So now I just wipe my opponent's board. This seems acceptable. This seems very acceptable. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, the Valakut has not been exiled, so this should be... This should be game. So one, two, three, prime time. Say yes. Valakut, Vesuva. And we're gonna stack our triggers properly. Kill some of these dudes. Bounce the Vesuva. Replay the Vesuva, copy in the other card. And now game's locked up. That was a cute little play there. Also good for us to know that my opponent is playing Archmage's Charm. That card has not aged well in the modern format. So at this point, my opponent just has too many too many threats to deal with here. They're not going to be able to deal with everything. So, uh, yeah. Gruel Turf, your face. All right, cool. Um, explosive seems great. I have to assume my opponent has some number of dress downs. So I do like Bog, I do like Explosives. I think Endurance is actually quite good. It does literally everything that we want. Not super high on Cultivator. I do like these members. And I think that's it. Cavern is fantastic. I think I'm gonna cut one Boseju, potentially one Garden. Blue and black. I don't think there's any way that Ursasa can get super blown out. Dress down would be the only thing. Dress down good, is good against me anyway. And Metamorph looks pretty bad here. We don't really have anything to copy, and yeah, I'm I'm not super into Metamorph. Uh, Gracer, maybe? Maybe we can cut a Gracer. I mean, we, we have so little ramp, though. I don't think I want to be cutting Gracer. We could cut Expedition Map, but I don't know. Every time I cut Map, I end up regretting it, even though I just cut it in the previous match, <laughs> but, but still. Um, it's. I think it's one of those, eh, I just don't know what to cut, so I'll cut map, and realistically, it's most likely that the, the, the right answer was somewhere else, you know? Um, so let's cut a basic forest. I don't think there's any way that my opponent can punish me for playing less basics. Halo of Ruin, potentially. All right, game number two, we have a cavern, we have gardens and amulet. This hand looks fantastic. Only thing this hand is missing is... Uh, like a gracer or something, like any way to ramp. So we're running this into spell peers, but I think that's fine. Because my opponent probably shocked to play the one drop, so sure. It's been enforced. So opponent swings for one, then passes it back. Uh, I can just bog myself here, or I can just play another gardens. Just play another gardens and send the turn back. We can actually just copy our own amulet here. Soaring Thought Thief. I think this is fine. I think we just ship it back. We can get blown out by uh, Archmage's Charm here. But I think if that's the case, I'm okay with it. So these uh, rogues work with uh, eight or more cards. Okay. So copy with Gardens. If my opponent wants to Archmage's Charm here, I think that's fine. So my opponent has spent their entire turn just like stealing a worthless amulet. So now... <laughs> That's cool. Uh, so I'm just gonna block myself here. This means that we just don't get hit particularly hard. Now I can play Cavern on Elemental. The most like obviously telegraphed endurance ever, but that's where we're at. Thieves Guild Enforcer. Triggers and triggers. Sure. So I think I... I think I Endurance right now. The reason being so that I can... The reason being so that I can dodge um, my opponent just casting Drown the Lock in response. And now this Endurance just kind of locks up the board. 
Because this triggers only once each turn, so my opponent can't attack. So they would need to have like fetch plus push. It's funny how like this single endurance just came down and it's just like, yo, what's up? <laughs> what else you got? What else do you got? No attacks. Makes sense. Uh, okay, so now... This is weird, right? Because I kind of want to play out this growth chamber so I can tighten next turn. Which means I can't endurance. I think I just have to do that though. I think it's just the only thing that I can do. I can just I just have to hope that this endurance is good enough. My opponent can make me draw a card here, which I'm not super Oh Odawara. Interesting. Okay. I mean that's kind of fine. Sure. Mill two. I'm gonna take six, five. Okay. Um that's a pretty good draw. So now we can play Cavern on Giant and say what's up. We don't even have to pack for it, which is nice. Dress down. Okay. That's good. That's really good. Uh, it actually does not trigger the fairy. That's hilarious. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so we have Endurance. So my opponent cannot dress down this Primeval Titan. Also, they can only attack in the air now. The question is, do I attempt to pack for Dryad? Because my opponent is going to be able to, to kill the Dryad in terms of... Um, they're gonna be able to um if if I wanna play around running the lock, they're gonna it, it, the summoner's back going to the graveyard is going to make it so I have three cards in my graveyard. So they're gonna be able to dress down a, a dryad. Oh actually they can't because I have endurance in hand, duh. Yeah, that's silly. Yeah, no, we just we just cast we just pack for dryad here. Alright, three mana to draw two. You got it. You sure you don't wanna make me draw two so I can so you can draw a card opponent? Missing out on some value. So, let's think about this. Um, Valakut's still in the deck. Uh, Valakut, it's not in the deck. Uh, Vesuva, I mean. An opponent has only one card there. So I think we just packed for Dryad here. See if it resolves. It does. And now we just cast the Dryad. Play this. And we just go face with all the triggers. Because we would be enabling Fatal Push. So I just serve here, and we just get Vesuva, and I guess I'm gonna get an Ursa Saga, whatever, and I just send all the triggers upstairs. Yep. All right, sweet. Nice little, nice little win. All right, this is a very interesting hand because we can go turn one Gracer, and then just like get value from Saga. And this Saga can go find, because we already have the Amulet, this Saga can go find Expedition Map. Uh, we, meaning that we do actually have access to a Bounce so I'm going to keep, because we have enough mana between the Gardens and the Saga, and we're only missing a Primeval Titan. But we have some basics, we have some blockers, we have some stuff to do. So I think that this is cool. I think this is a fine keep. Opponent Bubbles on one, targeting themselves. I have to assume Merc Tide as soon as I see Ursus Bubble. Mishra's Bubble, sorry. Yeah. Scully Tarn screams. Screams. I'm playing Merc Tide. Okay, so opponent sends it back. That is cool, that is cool. Another Gracer. So we're just gonna Gracer and put Saga in play. We're gonna start spitting out Constructs. And that's gonna be our play for now. Not a bad start. Not a half bad start. I probably can have something like Lightning Bolt here and step, which I would be pretty happy with. So they get Steam and Stepped. That probably says that my opponent's not on Shadow, because otherwise they would have shocked. So yeah, so now that confirms that they are either a Merc Tide or a Breach. There's a Monkey. So there's a Bounce Land. So now we're just going to send the turn back. And this Amulet is going to... Okay, so opponent Bolt's on end step. This amulet is actually going to go ahead and find me an expedition map, I think. I'm gonna see whether they attack. They do. Meaning that they're just they have a way to kill this, I assume. Oh wow. That's really aggressive. Sure, I'll take that. Okay, so monkey trigger, exiles, gruel turf. No big deal. Uh, I think I'm just going to We're gonna make a construct, and then we're going to play a second gracer. So we play around spell pierce again very nicely. So here's construct. Here's map. 
this allows me to find what I'm missing here in the um, play gardens, pass it turn back. The, the map is going to allow me to find uh, the missing piece here being the, the Titan. I can find Tolera West. Jesus, that's so aggressive. <laughs> so now here we have a free block on the monkey. Prime time? No. Okay. So we do have Boseju to, you know, blow stuff up if we need to. Play amulet. I think we're going to copy the amulet. Um, I'm just going to play this cavern on giant. And I think that the right play is going to be to copy the amulet on my end step. And then I'm going to be able to... I guess I'm going to be short. I'm going to be short two mana. That sucks. Opponent still does not have what's his name. They do not have the uh, the delirium just yet. Second monkey. Yeah, that is a way to achieve delirium, I guess. That is indeed a way to achieve delirium. If you really, really want it, gotta go get it. So I think I'm going to crack map here. Mm, let's think about this. So I already have two amulets. And I have four mana. So if I crack map for t West, I'm going to be one mana short from being able to do the thing. So I guess I'm in a situation where I actually need to find the Primeval Titan naturally. But if I crack map now... Oh. And I have some Merktide action here? Yep, that looks like it. Okay, that's a Merktide. So my opponent has exactly one mana up and they have lethal on board. If I crack this map for t West. That means that next turn I'm going to have seven mana. Because I'm gonna have to if I crack this for seven, I'm gonna have eight mana. If I copy, then I'm I'm still gonna have eight mana. So I guess it doesn't really make a difference. Uh I'm gonna have that same amount of mana regardless. So I guess I'm going to copy the amulet here because that gives me more options for the map. I may want to copy something else. Prime time, Grazer, those are the cards that win. Okay, that one wins. Summon respect. Uh, here's for Prime Evil Titan. And here is a bunch of mana. There we go. So the pawn is going to be very, very dead right here. Prime time. With blue mana floating, because whatever. T West plus Growth Chamber. Make a bunch of mana. Float, float, float. Float, float, untap, bounce, transmute, summoner's back. We even beat spell pierce here. Primeval Titan, go. T West, growth chamber. Triggers have been stacked. Mana has been floated. Transmute. I guess we're playing into mind break traps, so that part's bad, you know. <laughs> All right, Borders Garrison, Slayer Stronghold. Stack, float mana, activate and haste, float mana, man. Going through the mechanics with amulet just, it literally never gets old. Like there, there's no way that this deck ever gets old, ever. It's so sick, I love it so much. Uh, so here's a Valakut I guess, and sure, a random basic forest. Mix of mana, second trigger. Let's get a Sanctuary, and let's get a Sun Home. Float, float, tap, double strike that one, double strike that one, double strike the third one. And the last one's gonna find two Sagas for value. F6, choose your blockers. Storm count six, let's go, baby. Haha, <laughs> I, de I dealt Exaxis with, with first strike damage, that's cute. All right, so um, this is gonna be Merc Tide. So I like Boseju, like Bujugabog, love me some Trackers and Endurance and Engineered Explosives. Don't like Colossus. <sighs> Man, Swan Song is a big question mark in this matchup. Like Swan Song is fantastic versus Creativity, fantastic versus Rhinos, but like in this matchup, it's kind of puzzling, right? Whether I want to have access to, to the Swan Songs or not. I do know that I wanna cut at least two or three of the sagas and maybe a Mike's in Gardens or maybe two. Uh, this is one of the matches where I like to pivot a little bit and become a little bit more mid-rangey. 
Metamorphs feels ugh, kind of awkward. So cut some amount of amulets. Let's cut two. One saga, three gardens. Seems fine. I'm not sure how I feel about Metamorph, and I'm not sure how I feel about the Tyranax Rex. The Dino feels not good enough to me. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this. There's an argument for a wanting Swan Song, but I don't know. This hand has Cavernous Soul, so I love it. Turn one bubble. So do we play around Spell Pierce here, is the question. Do we want to play around Spell Pierce? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm just gonna name dry it here. And I'm just gonna jam into sp into spell pierce. And if my opponents got it, they got it. But okay, they do have it. They still have not fixed the bug that makes you that makes you click on <laughs> on no whenever that you have a soft piece of counter magic. Oh, main face consider. Yeah, this makes sense. And I imagine they found the land. Oh, they were upkeep doing that. Interesting. Okay. So play gardens, pass it back. Do you have blood moon opponent? Let's see what they got. There's the fetch land. There is the fetch. There's the blood moon. All right. So we have Boseju to draw towards. What else do we have? We have Boseju to draw towards. We also need the basic forest. Metamorph can like kind of copy something if my opponent chooses to play it against me. They have peak in their deck. This card is so bad, man. Just play anything else. <laughs> play literally anything else. Ah, oh, pick is heinous. It's so awful. Why would you choose to play that? Another iteration. My opponent is pulling really far ahead at this point. My opponent is pulling quite quickly far ahead. Yep. Just drawing a bunch of nothing. So if we find if we find the first basic, that means that we can play Dryad and then we can metamorph copy the Dryad. If my opponent somehow does not have the unholy heat. Although I guess that we will just hold up endurance so that we can Okay, there we go. Oh, they actually drew the second blue. Gross. I think we just pass back. I think we literally just pass it back. Consider on end step. I need for my opponent to like to tap out for something, I think. To tap their blue mana for for whatever. They don't know about the Endurance, they do know about the Metamorph, however. Cheating land drop, and... Please don't have a monkey. There's a Merktide, okay. I mean, we can Metamorph, but it's not gonna be great. Here's a Dryad. Let's play a land, and I think I'm gonna hold on to this one. I guess there's no reason to. Just pass it back. Just gonna cast. I could have also just, like, played the Metamorph, and... Pitch from Evil Titan to Endurance to play around this, but okay. So Endurance does resolve. It's gonna make the. I mean, I still have to hit here, right? It makes it grows the Merc Tide, but I just have to do that. So now we're drawing towards Boseju. I guess that would have been a reason to hold on to the Cavern Boseju specifically. I think I I take the first eleven because now I'm gonna get to play two Metamorphs, another Dryad. Okay, play Metamorph, and I guess I'm gonna copy my Endurance. Dress down. Well, that's gross. Does that kill it? I think that kills it. I think it just, yeah, it just dies. All right. They only have one blue mana. That's why I play the Dryad there. So now we're gonna have to chomp. This is not great. We're gonna have to chomp the Merc Tide. I have to assume that my opponent's hand is a bunch of blanks here. If their hand is indeed a bunch of blanks, we can play prime time. No, we can't. We, we need to draw a land, I guess, and we can play prime time and explode this for one. Yeah, my, my opponent's not sideboarding well, I don't think. Dress down. Okay, that's bad. All right, well, there you go. So here's a grazer. Let's go to my chomp blocker. And here is a prime time. And this is what I got. Swing for two. For value. So we still need to find the Boseju. Oh, they just they just explosive skilled the, the Gracer. I'm an idiot, of course. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're dead. We're just dead. Okay. All right, we lost to Blood Moon, unsurprisingly. Uh, I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna bring in the Swan Songs. The one before us, I think, 
I cut the last saga for the gardens. Yeah, let's just cut the gardens anyway. Uh, there's also, I guess I can just cut the sun home. Yeah, let's do that. So this gives me blue for swan song. We got dismember. We got tracker. I think metamorph is okay. I don't think it's particularly great, but it's just fine. And uh, just cut the Azusa. I'm cutting the Azusa mostly because I'm not really attempting to do... Uh, this hand's great, though. I'm cutting the Azusa because I'm not really attempting to do amulet things at all. So here's the Grazer. So all I need to... All I want to draw right here is just lands. If I hit one land drop every turn, I'm going to be happy. Or I can just draw a single bounce land and then we're just there, right? That's the nice thing about bounce lands in this deck. Okay. It's another green source. Don't mind if I do. Here's a grazy boy. Like that. And send it back. So we I would like to draw another land. What I'm fetching for basic probably means Blood Moon. We'll see what's up. Although I guess if they do go for Blood Moon, we just get to resolve prime time. Unless they have subtlety. But, you know, you can only read so much, right? Good old Merktide. Just being the bane of Amulet's existence since, I don't know, whenever it was printed. Uh, let's go ahead and just name Giant here and send it back. The nice thing here is like we naturally drew the Endurance, so we're going to be able to just, you know, do our thing, really. We just play proactively. So now opponent has Merktide mana, but they kept with Consider, so I'm assuming that like whatever they were, whether they were missing the land and they were missing the... The uh, the Blood Moon itself, they found it. So they fetched really quickly, but now they're tanking. <laughs> they fetched very quickly, but now they're thinking about it. So they're just going to cast Merktide instead. Okay. So let's untap. Let's see if we found a land. That's nice. Summon Respect. Primeval Titan. Cast this. Let's name... I guess we're going to name Dryad with this one. And if they have subtlety, they have subtlety, whatever. All right, that worked. Perfect. So we're going to say yes, and we're just going to go get Teluria West and Growth Chamber. Maybe I should have gotten a Boseju there to play around the future Blood Moon. The thing is that if they do play Blood Moon here, we just take, they just take a bunch, right? We can pay for Pact because we naturally found two forests, which is nice. Otherwise, I would have found basics off of the Primeval Titan. And there's the moon. I mean, I can just... I guess I, if I find a Dryad, I can T-West. I can T-West for, um, for Boseju to blow this up if I want to. But yeah, I should have I should have definitely gotten Bounce Land Boseju now that I think about it. I was thinking about Unholy Heat, but I kind of have Unholy Heat cover thanks to the Endurance. Uh, I'll take five. Uh, maybe I should have maybe I should have blocked it there. It's close. Pay for Pact. Find the bounce land. Swing with prime time. Say yes. Get a couple of basics. And send it back. So now we find Dryad. We're good. If we find another Titan, we, we're very likely just good. We have to dodge. I mean, I guess it's not super likely for them to find Delirium right here. We did find a monkey. If they attack, I'm just going to block with Gracer. If they want to trade Merktide for Prime Time, that's fine. We just erase them with Endurance. So this random stupid Primeval Titan, like just Colossal Dreadmon is just kind of putting my opponent on a clock here. Really making things tough for them. Okay, so they do cast the Monkey and I imagine they're just going to pass it back on the attempt to double block. This is great for me. Yep, this is really good for me. Zwing. Gonna get, I guess I'm just gonna get Stronghold and the Gardens. Double block's fine. Another question is one, two, three, four, five, six. Play another Titan. Say yes. Get two more Gardens. And I guess there's no real reason to play any of these out right now. They peak. Great. It's okay. Now you know that I have this thing. And I'm going to cast it now because otherwise my opponent is going to be able to actually play a Merktide here. Also, this just casually adds, you know, three. <laughs> it are 30% of my opponent's remaining life total, right? In terms of power. So now my opponent gets to see how dead they are. 
So they played bubble and they double bolted the prime time, or what? <laughs> Bolt of raid. Okay. I don't know about that sequencing. Not super sold on the sequencing there, but okay. Well, they found the bubble. Lux sack. Pointing confirm Lux sack. So we want to draw Boseju. Boseju is our best draw. Another pact would be great. Yeah, like that one. The question now is, do I pack for Endurance? I can also pack for Dryad. Or I can just pack for another Titan. So if I pack for another Titan, my opponent's going to be able to potentially play a 6-6 six, six or bigger Merktide, which means that that is not great. I can also pack for Dryad, play Dryad, then transmute. So one, two, three to play Dryad, one, two, three to transmute, packed, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. So I can both Dryad and Primeval Titan. Tyronax Rex would have been sick for what's worth. <laughs> Tyronax Rex would have been thick, sick. Um, I think I'm just going to pack for a tracker, actually. Let's just pack for a tracker. Try to get some value that way. This may be potentially the worst of the bunch. But I think there is value here, particularly if I, if I find something good. This is bad against specifically Lightning Bolt. That's nice. That is very nice. Okay, so next turn we pay for Pact, blow this up, then we have... Because I don't want to give my opponent mana. Also, if I blow this up, that gives my opponent uh, Unholy Heat. So I think I'm just going to pass it back. I'm just going to try to use this Blood Moon to my advantage a little bit. Okay, so they do have the Bolt. Sucks, but it is what it is. So they do have the Merc Tide, which is a 7-7. Seven, seven. If I blow up the Moon on End Step, I think I have to. But this is going to make it so my opponent's going to have... Um, like, they can now Summoner's back my stuff. So that part's obviously not great. Untap. 1, 2, 3, 4. Say yes. Another Boseju. Let's float mana and transmute for Summoner's Pact. And I think I just cast Summoner's Pact right now. Sure, they can have Counter Spell, they can have a bunch of things, but um, so one, two, two, three, four, five, six. We still have a land drop to give here. Dress down. They do have the dress down. Okay. Um, I guess I could have played around that by holding up a green mana and like blowing up the dress down there. I think it's close. Like the idea was to go find um Oh actually I can't I, I couldn't have hasted. Yeah, so I, it was actually a miss it was actually a misstep there. Cause the only way to float white would have been to with one of the gardens, and that then I that means that I'm one mana short of activating the garden, so that was just a misstep. So now I don't have Boseju. And I could have been able to... Like, now if they have, like, Cycle Islet into Unholy Hit My Titan, now we are kind of in a pickle. Unless I find, like, Dryad off the top or something. And if I find Dryad off the top, that would be lethal. Alright, so they draw two. We'll see if they found an, an Unholy Hit. Because a Hit... Uh, they still have four, by the way. But they can just, like, Cycle Fiery Islet and just kill my Primeval Titan here. Or just fetch. Whatever. Whatever they think it's best. Another Blood Moon. That one we're okay with. He E for one. He E for zero. Oh, they misclicked. Whoops. I mean, I don't, th I don't think that matters whatsoever for what's worth. I don't think that matters at all. Oh, we still have the Endurance to block the Merktide. So now we pay for Pact. Say yes. Another Grazy Boy. So if we attack with Prime Time, in combat we can blow up the Blood Moon. And give it plus two plus so. Yeah. That seems good enough because it deals with my opponent's only threat. So let's go Boseju Blood Moon now that I have this trigger. And now I think we get Bojuka Bog. Because my opponent has the force block here and I can just trade one for one. So I think we get... Oh, we can just get... I guess we can get Boros Garrison plus Boseju play around another one, or we can just get Tolerate West. I think I want to get Tolerate West. 
Yeah, Borders Garrison plus T West. Bounce T West. And now going to D plus 2 plus O. Which kills the Merc Tide, gets rid of the my opponent's only clock, puts my opponent down to two. And now we transmute for another summon respect. Send it back. And I think that's gonna be game. Opponent can blow up explosive and like dash a monkey, that just doesn't do anything. They can kill the endurance, that's also whatever. They can play another Blood Moon potentially. Play a land, they have two cards left in hand. They don't have Delirium anymore. And I can just trade this for the Merktide if I want to. Or I can just draw a Dryad and just win the game. That seems like the better line. Oh, I could have made it uncounterable, whoops. All right, so that resolved. Counterspell, okay. So, we just trade here? <laughs> I have a couple of options here. I can attack and trade. If I don't think my opponent has another basic island, I can just attack with Gracer and just pump the Gracer instead, which is funny. Um, I think we just beef up the Dryad here and we just we just swing with two lethal threats. They could have like basic island, brace and board, bounce your endurance or whatever. That's really the only realistic thing they could have. But all right, three and zero. Oh. That was a long one. That was kind of a kind of a long one. Putting down to three minutes in clock. Okay, three and zero. Oh. Let's see what we got going on here. Um, I guess this is a keep. We're on the play. Like this would be a snap keep on the draw. On the play is like I feel like on the lower end of keeps because it can be pretty clunky. Right, <clears throat> but the fact that we have both uh, Armulet, a way to continue developing our mana in Expedition Map, we have a Blocker in Gracer and Dryad, and we already have the Titan, so that, like that's too many like good things going on. So I think this is good enough to keep. We'd love to find any land. Okay, that is probably one of the best lands to find here. So now we can go uh, Cavern on Beast. Just cavern on beast, play Gracer, play Bounce Land, and bounce the the cavern itself, which set, sets us up really nicely for the following turn. Uh, Ketria Trion Basic Forest. Hmm, what could that be? Okay, so with my opponent doing Fire Knights here, I'm just I'm just gonna get my value here. I'm gonna make my construct. Seems I'm I'm not gonna be able to like get value from my dryad, so uh, let's get our amulet into play, and I'm gonna play this on giant, I guess, and just gonna send it back. And the fact that we draw primeval titan is great because now I can just uh, pack for a gracer next turn, and like we'll see what they do. Maybe they have an answer to my amulet. They don't. It looks like. So this is just Rhinos then. Um, hmm. Our best draw would be Asusa here. It's not it. So now the question is, do we want to play around subtlety? Do we want to play around main deck subtlety? My opponent has not shown me, they have not shown me a subtlety over there. So I can actually go Pact for Gracer or Asusa, probably Asusa. Pact for Asusa. Cast prime time, haste prime time, attack, and then we set up we set up like our next turn. I think that's fine. So yeah, I think that's the line here. I think that is the, the best line for me. So bounce here. We're going to pact. The alternative would be to pact for um Okay, so they do have the force of negation. Which is fine, it just means that we go for Dryad instead. And I guess that we can crack this expedition map and go get probably Valakut. Um, I guess getting Gardens is just better, gives me another Titan. So let's just go for that. Um, if my opponent has main deck Blood Moon, that's fine. Like I'm just going to lose to it. Probably can't beat that anyway, so. So opponent attacks, I'm gonna soak three damage because that's all really that this Gracer is gonna be doing. So uh, Brace and Borrower would, could be kind of a blowout. <clears throat> Brace and Borrower could be a blowout. So I think what I'm going to do 
is I'm just going to like make both of my land drops right now. So that means we're going to go uh, play Growth Chamber, Float Mana, Bounce, make my second land drop. And now what I can do is I can just play, I can just, uh, I guess I'm, just, I'm going to Float the Mana here and just Bounce the Cavern of Souls. We're going to, yeah, we're going to cast Primeval Titan floating white mana. And with this trigger on the stack, I'm going to copy my amulet. So now we have that guaranteed, and I can just go ahead and I can go get Borders Garrison, Slayer Stronghold. I guess it could have been better to get something else instead, but I, I, th I think this is good. I think this is good. So activate that on prime time. We don't have any packs to pay for, so I guess I can just bounce this. Yeah, that seems reasonable. So bounce the Silas in Sanctuary, move to combat. We'll see if my opponent does have the Brazen Borrower, because now would be the time to use it. If they got Borrower, they don't have Rhinos though, which is nice. And again, we don't have any packs to pay for, so this is just fine. Okay, so they had the same except. They had the same except different. Um dead gone so that's cool uh and now i feel very happy how i played around that right because i, I guess this could have yeah it, this only returns a creature so it couldn't have bounced the amulet but i played around my opponent having a bounce spell for my amulet there uh, i guess i just attack for two no there's actually no value in attacking i, I can just like block the charlotte's agent here so as is i can just uh, throw a construct in front of one of these rhinos and just pump it so if my opponent has the Blood Moon here, we're going to be in trouble, but we are basically beating everything else. So opponent sends there, we block, we pump. And now opponent can do whatever they want. I This is not lethal anyway, so I don't really care what the outcome of this is. The only thing that really matters is whether my opponent has the Blood Moon as a follow-up or they don't. That is not a Blood Moon. Uh, we also get a nice little peek at most of the deck list. So, oh, okay, no main deck Blood Moon, but they, there is Merktide Regent. I don't see... <clears throat> I see Disputes, which don't do anything. I see Borrowers. I don't see anything like main deck Blood Moons. I don't I don't see anything like... Ooh, Becoming Mints. That's a good one to know about. I don't see anything crazy like uh, Subtleties main deck and stuff. So, So I think we just jam here. Um, yep, so play my land, play another land. And now this should be more than enough to do the thing. So float my mana, cast my primeval titan, say yes, go Valakut, and I guess, oh, th yeah, we're fine, never mind. Yeah, I was gonna say I wanna play around, um, I wanna play around f a Force of Negation, but I can still haste my primeval titan here, so doesn't really matter so balak at your face this is just fine float float and three you three you bounce this summoner's pact just get another prime time cast it get vesuva get tolerio west all of these goes face i guess i should have gotten colossus Colossus would have been the better pick here. Doesn't really matter though. White, red, all of the triggers go face. Haste one of them, swing, lethal. So, yep. All right, so going to sideboard. Uh, this is the matchup for Swan Song. This is it's precisely the matchup where Swan Song is at its best. I'm expecting some number of uh, Blood Moons. So I do like Stonebrain, I do like Boseju, I obviously love Engineered Explosives. Anything else? I think Tireless Tracker is kind of medium. Uh, I do want to cut at least two or three Sagas. Could see myself cutting the fourth one too, honestly. Cavern of Souls doesn't really do anything, but I'm keeping my in Garden to cast my Swan Songs. I don't want forces. I don't think I want Hero Rex. Honestly, like this card has not felt great, to be honest. I 
I'm not a huge fan of this card. I, I don't know what it's supposed to do. <laughs> like, it's smaller than Murktide, or, like, just as big as Murktide. It's, it just trades with one pair of Rhinos. Like, I don't know. I don't understand what Tyronax Rex is supposed to do. Like, I don't know what matchups this is supposed to help you in. Um, it just it doesn't really make, make too much sense to me. Like, it's not great against Blood Moon because it has three Grim Pips. Yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling... <laughs> I'm not feeling the, the, the Tyronax Rex. Um, so I think we cut a map, and I'm gonna cut a metamorph. Let's actually cut two metamorphs, keep the map in. Map is a way to find a basic or proceed you. Metamorph just kind of doesn't really do anything. All right, so this hand does a bunch of nothing, so let's ship it. This hand is better by a lot, so keep this hand. We're gonna bottom the Valakut? I think I'm supposed to bottom the Tolera West because I already have the Summoner's back. T West does find me explosives though, so that, that is certainly valuable, but okay, so opponent passes. Would love to find any land. Okay, that, that plays. So play Boss Seiju. Play I'm a little bigger. <clears throat> Next turn we get to Oh they forced? Okay. Pitch a Murktide? Alright. I mean if my opponent does have the Blood Moon on turn three, that's gonna be bad for me, but I'm definitely going to play um, to play a land, uh, play bounce land here, so that I can have this in my hand. So I only need to I only need to find a basic forest. But I'm certainly expecting moon here. An opponent promptly fetches for a basic, of course. Here it is. My opponent cannot cast uh, their cascade spells though, <laughs> just in time. Swan song, you love to see it. Uh, let's get the Gruel Turf into play. So I guess, I mean, if I do find if I do find a basic forest, I think I'm actually a heavy favorite to win this game. Granted, I do need to find a basic forest, which is I only have four copies of in my deck. So man, if we had been on the play though, we would be in real good shape. Um oh, there it is. Well. Hmm. How do I want to do this? I think I want to send it back. I don't want my opponent to be able to just like cast a fury or something. So I dry up my opponent on end step. I, I blow up Boseju, like the Blood Moon on end step. And then I untap and I slam Primeval Titan. Three cards in hand for OP. I can actually Swan Song here. So let's pact. So if my opponent has force, I can just four against Swan Song here, which is nice. Uh, if they do have what's his name though, I'm gonna cast uh, play Cavern and Giant, leave blue mana floating here, and we can still pay for Pacto my upkeep as things currently stand. So I'm just gonna say yes here. Let's get a basic forest, and I think I'm gonna get Tolera West. Alternatively, I could get an island, a, a bounce land. I mean, yeah. Let's get Tolera West. Send it back. So now my opponent can bounce my dude, they can make some rhinos. I can make some rhinos on my end step, but that's not even close to lethal. And I'm just gonna be able to resolve this triad. They can go Fury plus Shock, which would be kind of annoying. Okay, Crushing Footfalls. This surprise Swan Song is pretty dope here. Uh, yep, just gonna pay for my Pact. Say yes. And one, two, and three. Cast Dryad. Three mana to dispute. Swan Song the dispute. So they could still have fours here. Um I actually I, I misclicked, damn it. Um yeah. I was supposed to play the gardens there to play around force of vigor. Which I think my opponent has. Yeah. So I gave my opponent a force of vigor target for no reason at all. Uh so that was bad. Also now I'm not holding Boseju anymore. That was Pretty bad, I think. If I swing, I just trade with a Rhino. I have I have much better attacks next turn. So I'm just gonna pass it back. Let's see what my opponent's got going on over there. Otawara, okay. So yeah, I'm I'm punished by my by my misclick last turn because I could have transmuted for engineer explosives. I can still, I guess, bossage you this thing, but 
I play Primeval Titan, that is 6 mana, I have 3 to transmute, I'm 1 mana short of uh, transmuting for explosives and playing it, so... I'm gonna have to, like, hold Titan back to block a Rhino, and then, like, we lose to a bounce spell. Man, I should... <sighs> that was bad, that was really bad. Okay, uh, this is where we're at right now, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here is prime time. Say yes. <clears throat> and let's get Bordos Garrison, I guess, in Sunhome. And we're going to bounce the Toleri West. We're gonna play out Mike's in Gardens. This is this is gonna allow me to transmute next turn. And now we pass the turn back. <clears throat> and now we lose to a bounce spell, but we should be good against everything else. Second Uriwara, that'll do it. Yep, uh, my mis my mistake actually uh, my mistake actually got me because I was going to be able to transmit for explosives and then just just clean it up from there. Um, so yeah, rightfully punished. I think I want Colossus over Metamorph. Like Metamorph just kind of sucks, right? Metamorph just doesn't really do anything. Um, this is a hand, I guess. Ugh. Okay, I guess I'll keep this. So I can go turn one, Gardens, that's annoying. Uh, turn one, Gardens into Amulet. Sand is really bad in the face of Force. Oh, okay, that Force I'm okay with. My opponent's gonna be able to Blood Moon me before I get to have Bosage Mana, so that part is annoying, but Saga. Yep, I guess if they have turn three Blood Moon, I just concede the game anyway, so. All right, show it to me. Man, I should have won this game. This is frustrating. This is frustrating. So if they have land into Blood Moon, the game just basically ends on the spot. Shardless Agent. Okay, so I guess we play on. We play on. There's a moon. Yeah, okay. So my opponent just put 10 power into play. No big deal. Um, I can make one dude here. Another dude next turn. Man, I really need some way to ramp here. So I'm going to assume that my opponent does not have a Blood Moon, so the Chomp Blocker can actually take one turn away from the clock. So I think that means that I'm supposed to play this out, Cavern on Giant, and just keep the keep the Saga Construct as it as it I guess as a way to trade with the Shardless Agent. If they have Blood Moon, we lose. But I mean, that's just kind of how it works. So we're gonna take ten here, clean ten damage. They could also have subtlety, I guess. I mean, I still need to find a way to the ramp. That's a way to ramp. Okay, so slow the mana. And we're just gonna YOLO. So here's an amulet. I'm going to go to copy the amulet. Does this result for do you have the force of vigor? And if they have the force of vigor, we lose. But like the other option would be to like play out the dryad, and then like the dryad is, I guess it's blocking. I mean it, the, the dryad just gets swept up by the force anyway, so I cannot beat force of vigor here. Yeah. Oh, Otawara. Okay. I may be able to beat that, actually. So we play an amulet again. And now... Wow, this is really interesting. So we have a land drop. Once again, I'm assuming no Blood Moon because I can't beat it. And I also lose to... What's his name, right? Oh, no, I can actually beat... Um, I can Bosage with the Charless Agent. So I think that's the line, because the, well, the other thing that I'm considering here is to Vesuva my Mycosin Garden, so next turn I can just copy an amulet, play a bounce land, we're going to have two amulets in play, and then we can actually go up to three amulets, uh, if, I, if I use Vesuva this turn to copy my gardens. The, the thing I'm trying to figure out is whether do I need that or not. And this allows me to play around... So I can just block a Rhino with Construct and just um, block a Rhino with Construct and then just make, um, just blow up with Buseju. Um, and next turn I'm gonna have two lands in play, one land in play because I'm gonna be copying Amulet. I think I actually do need, I think I actually do need the three, the three Amulets. I think I actually do need the three Amulets. So, if I only have two amulets, I'm not going to be able to trigger the Dryad. So I'm just going to do this right here. 
and then now we're gonna trade with Charlotte's agent and then we lose to a pump spell we lose i guess we don't lose to a pump spell but we do lose to force we do lose to like a bunch of things okay so they do have the force okay feels bad i should have won this game uh, this match but uh, the, the misclick ended up costing me and i was i was punished for that that sucks all right last match played against vampire diaries uh, regular in the in the stream or whatever so nice nice fella um ba -ba -ba -ba. So this hand we can go turn one saga, turn two Vesuva Kopi Saga, turn three Gardens play Metamorph? Is that, is that good? Then next turn we can Gardens. So this is a turn four. This is a turn four kill on the draw. Because turn three this is gonna pop. Then we play Metamorph, then we play Gardens on the following turn. So this is actually a turn four kill. We double. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep it because we have double Titan. So we're good against Thoughtseize. We're good against Counter Magic. Uh-oh. Temple Garden usually means bad news for us. Uh, Ursa Saga, your go. Uh, because if, if this Saga gets messed with in this specific turn, it's going to be tough for us to come back from. If this Saga gets messed with on the following turn, we're not going to be so sad about it. Still, I'd rather this saga not, not be messed with, but, you know, you can only do so much. Turn one Temple Garden into Basic Forest. Snow-covered forest, excuse me. No other Amber Skull. Hallowed Fountain. Ha. Huh. All right. Okay, so we're going to stack our triggers. We're going to float my mana. And... Going to get my amulet. So I think the problem is if I play Metamorph and my opponent blows this up with like a Leyline Binding or something, I kind of lose on the spot. So that part's not great. So I think I'm just going to play Gardens and I'm just going to say go. This way I get to play around removal on the amulet. It's going to effectively destroy my... It's going to effectively destroy my uh, my land, but I think that's fine. And I'm doing this right now so that I play around Leyline Binding. So they're playing Soul Herder. If they have the Tension Sphere guy, I'm going to probably lose. That's fine. All right, cool. So we're gonna get to <laughs> we're gonna get to do some stuff and some things here. Just a casual triple amulet. I guess it's kind of quadruple amulet, huh? All right, float a man up. This is Vesuva, by the way, so we're not going to have Vesuva anymore. Here is a Bounce Land. Please don't subtlety me. Float some mana. Uh, so I guess I just... Actually, I just play Primeval Titan here, right? It sets up my other Titans, but it actually gives me a bunch of... A, a nice little boost on mana. So now I get to play both Dryad and another Titan. So float a healthy amount of mana yep just casually float 10 mana don't worry about it so i still have to play around solitude right still have to play around solitude plus ephemerate so i'm still gonna play around solitude plus ephemerate so i'm going to put a third primeval titan in play before i do anything else i guess at this point i can just go for uh cultivator colossus at this point, that's just probably the better line. So, I think I still bounce the T-West anyway. So let's Pact, four Colossus. And the opponent concedes, okay, yep. Yeah, so now we're going to like really go off here. Um, actually, we're going to be able to Metamorph copy in Colossus. But yeah, up, up until this point, my opponent could still have had access to Solitude plus Ephemerate, and I would have killed both of my Titans, so. All right, dismember. Really like that card in this matchup. And Genetic Explosive is fine. Is this finally the Tyranax Rex matchup? Have we found it? <laughs> uh, I think so. I think this is the Tyranax Rex matchup. Uh, do we want Boseju? Do we want Swan Song? Do we want Bog? I definitely want to slow down my Saga slash Gardens. So let's cut a couple of those. Gotta cut three cards. Do you wanna cut one metamorph? Gonna cut two gracers. Let's go with like this. Hey, there we go. Uh, 
I think this hand's fine. Like, this hand is not flashy or anything, but I think I'd rather just have, like, a slow and steady draw than a draw that gets blown out by Prismatic Ending, Solitude, etc, etc, etc. So, let's keep this. I think I'm going to play around Force 2. Okay, that's a good draw. I'm just going to play out the Amulet. If my opponent wants the Prismatic Ending, the Amulet, the Expedition Map, sorry. I'm kind of okay with that. I don't really care about the card. Okay, so that's another bounce land, which is not great. Not really where we want to be, but it's fine. So next turn we can go Gardens, Dryad, play another bounce land. Sure, Ice Fang is fine. This is the beginning of the engine though, right? Not at all. Okay, that's fine. Doesn't really matter too much. But we are going to play the Dryad in the face of the Knight of Autumn. So that part is not great, because now if my opponent does have... Ooh, okay. Um... Yeah, I'm probably still playing Dryad here. And just playing the Gruel Turf. So now if they have a way to blink the Knight of Autumn, they can blow up the Dryad, which is okay, I guess. Soul Herder would be the worst, because it also allows them to develop their board. If they're just using Ephemerate, I don't, I don't care that that much. But Soul Herder in particular is kind of meaning. Reflector Mage doesn't really matter. Reflector Mage is kind of whatever. We're taking some damage, though. Um, yeah, I think we just, just play this Grazy Boy. We're just going to put another put another Gruel Turf into play. We can play Tyranax Rex next turn. I still think we play Primeval Titan. Primetime just sets me up better. It also gets the Valakut into play. I think I go get Valakut to Lyria West. Nope, higher. Block. <laughs> okay, so if I play no, I have to play prime time here, right? Yeah, we just play prime time. Cause next turn I can now go Tyronex Rex. So we're gonna get Valakut and T West and play the Gardens and send it back. And now next turn we can go Tyronex Rex and we can also play the Dryad. Solitude Ephemerate here would suck for us, but at least it's going to give us a nice little life cushion. Uh, that may be a mistake on my opponent's part, actually, because now I can just cast Primetime next turn. Whereas if they had Ephemerated on their turn, I was not going to be able to play Primeval Titan, because the way this is phrased, it says it can be cast until your next turn, but because it was on my, on my turn... Now this is my opponent's next turn, so now my turn I can just cast this prime time again. And I think I'm going to? I kind of want to go dry into Tyranax Rex, though. Eternal Witness for Ephemerate. Makes sense. Block there. Saga. So actually, I think I go prime time. Huh. So the good thing about playing prime time is like my opponent can bounce and then they ephemerate the witness on their turn. But if I play a dryad now, if I play a dryad first, then I can go sun home and just cast Tyranax Rex and then just like Rex them next turn. Because they can't do anything to the Rex this turn. This is not close to having death touch, so that's fine. But I think I'm just going to go for a prime time instead. If I go for that, what am I getting? I think I'm getting Engineer Explosives to, to play on 3. I think that's the line. Because if I play Explosives for 3, I just stop my opponent's offense entirely. So let's go Stronghold and Sanctuary. Then we're going to bounce T-West. And we're going to Transmute. Or explosives. And I guess I'm gonna play out this sun home on Seiko. <clears throat> and now next turn I can just play lead on explosives for three, see what my opponent does, and then take it from there. But this also puts more lands in play. That's a close turn though. <laughs> yeah, opponent doesn't even balance my, my prime time there. Correctly so. Correctly so. So what I can do now is play Tyranax Rex. I can, I guess I can kind of give it double strike, which is cute. But I'm going to hold on to the 
the dry it until I can, um, until I, I pop this. I also don't really have to do this. I don't have another Titan, so that's kind of a concern. So maybe I should have gotten, should have gotten T-West over Stronghold, Soul Herder. That's cool. Should probably attack with Ice Fang there. Oh, that's fine, I think. Well, um, play this one. They may have Force of Negation. If they don't have it, this is going to be really good. Okay, so now we just play the Rex. We can pop this whenever we want. Play land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Am I trading it here? I think if my opponent wants to trade everything for my Tyranarch Rex, I'm kind of okay with that. Let me just take it. Okay, that is also fine. Sure. Ephemerate the Ice Fang. I'm pretty sure I cannot die from here. And if they attempt to Ephemerate the Eternal Witness, I think I just... That's when I pop. So I can Fissel the Ephemerate. This is going to kill them next turn because I can just double strike it. Yep. Pointing correctly. Ephemerating the Ice Fang. What an interesting game. Very, very interesting game. So I think here we just take the chump, take six down to five, and we just hold on to this for as long as we can. Imagine they're going to blink Ice Fang again. Because at this point, I can just. Um, at this point, I can just. There's nothing that they can do at instant speed for three that threatens me. So, yeah, I pop now. My opponent can ephemerate this in response, which is fine. But now this just double striking means that... Yeah, this is. I think this is just too many threats. One, two, three. Play Dryad. We're going to... One, two, three, four, five, six. Play Primeval Titan. So now they have to answer the Dryad, they have to answer the Tyranex Rex, otherwise it kills them. They have six cards in hand, which is a lot of them, but... Maybe I should have killed the Noble Hierarch first. Oh, I should have just made two land drops. Yeah, this was bad. I should have just made... I, I didn't realize that my opponent is actually just a six. So I should have gone land, face you, then land, face you again, and then take it from there. So now we're going to go Vesuva, Tulare West... And Vesuva, I guess, is going to copy Valakut. Just go face. So this forces my opponent to answer both the Dryad and the Rhino. But yeah, like I... So now if they have Solitude plus Blink, this is bad for me. Also, I met... Yeah, I... this is just so much worse. Because now I'm not going to be able to... Ugh. Yeah, this sucks. Like, if I, if I haste... Now they can just blink and kill my Tyranax. Yeah, I think I just float white here. Oh, but this is still lethal, so this is fine. So I float white, and now my opponent can ephemerate, evoke trigger. But yeah, I, I definitely messed this up. Like, I could have played this much more optimally. So now they can kill my prime time, or they can kill my Tyranax, but not both. So they do kill my prime time. But now I can still give plus two plus all to the Tyranax, meaning that it's not enough for my opponent to chump. So I'm just killing them with natural damage, not necessarily with the with the poison counter. So they just have to chump with the solitude. They actually have to chump with everything. Four mana. Collected company. Oh wow. Okay. Okay, maybe they can find enough blockers here. If they find another Ice Fang, they can actually just potentially trade with the Tyranax. They still need to throw some stuff under the bus, and stuff like Reflector Mage doesn't do anything here. So there's that still. And I guess they need to... Yeah, so they can go get another island. Or a Plains. So now they can Death Touch, but they still need to block some more. Wow, I was not expecting Collected Company. That definitely caught me by surprise because, you know, my opponent's going to be playing Solitudes and stuff, right? Coco, not great with Solitudes. 
So here opponent goes to one. I think I play out a Saga. The other alternative was to play out the Boros. So now they get to blink Ice Fang. Just gonna grow Soul Herder. They are at one though. They are at one. And they have to respect my Silly Construct token because it can be hasted and be lethal. Five cards is a lot of cards though. If they have Ewit, they can go Ewit into Ewit into Knight of Autumn. Ooh, Coco was revealed. Tyranax did some good work there. If we had a second copy, I I would have won this game. Which is kind of cool. We'll take three here. Oof. Um uh, man, this game's close. This game is so so close. So I don't have fetches, so I cannot play lands at instant speed. That's a good draw though. That's a really good draw. So I think we lead on that. So one, two, three. Actually, let's go one, two, three. Play Dryad. And then we're gonna play Borders Garrison and we're gonna go face. So this is obviously gonna force act some action here. So my opponent needs to find an answer to the Dryad here. And if they have Solitude, they need to do it right now. Okay, Skyclave does it. Skyclave does it. So we're gonna be able to transmute here. Transmute. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. We get to play a prime time. Yeah. So our color should be fine. Uh, opponents completely tapped out. So the question now is do I want to go for prime time or do I want to go for dried? I think I want to go for prime time. I'm gonna transmute here for summoners packed. Gonna pact. Trying to see if there's any reason that I should go for something that is not primeval tied to here, and I don't think there's any. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe cultivator would have been a better pick. Maybe Cultivator would have been a better pick, actually. Eh, it's close. So let's get Saga times two. Yeah, let's get Saga times two. And Haste. Do you have the Solitude? All right, opponent gives me the GG's. GG's on Paradise. Good. That was a crazy game. <laughs> that, was a, that was a truly crazy game. Wow. That was, that was nice. Wrapping this one up, Metamorph uh, was not particularly particularly crazy to me. So the issue that I have with Metamorph as a card is not so much with the card itself, the problem is with the card that you're cutting to make room for it, right? So we're cutting Explore, which is a card that is intended to actually give you consistency, right? Like to make the floor of the deck a little bit higher while we're adding a card like Metamorph, which is kind of the opposite, where we are adding more raw power, but we also have, as we had multiple times throughout the league, uh, just a card that doesn't really do anything, right? Like, we kind of want to save it to copy your amulet, but we also kind of want to save it to copy the amulet, but we also can't do either because our mana is stacks doing other things. So it really doesn't smooth out our draws in the same way that Explore does, but in a way it kind of makes them a little bit clunkier and makes us even more susceptible to removal, be it on, you know, on the amulets themselves or whatever, on the primeval titans otherwise. So they feel kind of weird to me as a main deck card. I feel like if we had gotten paired against creativity, we like we would be singing a different song right now. Because like this card seems pretty decent versus creativity specifically. But uh, besides that, when we're just discussing a normal just or average match of amulet against a random or against a random opponent, I don't I'm not sure Metamorph is exactly where I want to be. Um I do like the idea though like particularly the fact that it saves up cyber slots is kind of nice like we were able to play stuff like swan song and whatnot because we actually made room for the metamorphs in the main deck so that that part is kind of nice um and i'm not necessarily off of the card i feel like we just did not really see it do the thing that it was intended to do which uh, makes me skeptical about it uh, i may try it out again because it's crazy enough to work kind of deal but this feels more like a 
decent sideboard card, more than a main deck card, but uh, this seems like a pretty solid starting point. Things that I was not really big fan of, the fourth copy of Cavern of Souls, this could possibly be maybe the second Valakut or maybe something else. Um, although I do, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of the second copy of Valakut anyway, but it does add some percentage points here and there. And the Swan Songs were kind of clunky, were really hard to cast. Uh, I feel like if you're going to be doing something like that and you're going to be playing Swan Songs, you need to have access to some number of Fetchlands and Slash Breeding Pool. Like, those are the kind of cards that you want. The four Gardens are just not enough. They're, they're, that's that's just the truth of the matter. Um, so, yeah, we have God and Blood Moon because, you know, we, we could not Swan Song in time. Tyrannax Rex had a, a very good showing in that very last match. But that was kind of it. Like, besides that, I'm kind of skeptical of where you really want this. So that's not where you want to be in with your sideboard card. It did feel, however, that if you want to go this, right for, this route for whatever reason, maybe having two copies could be the way to go because of what we saw in that very last match where your opponent finally gets rid of it. And then, you know, all of that toxic damage that you dealt doesn't really add up to anything. Sure, beating down for 8 is pretty good, so there's that going. But, uh, yeah, I'm not super high on the card. It looked cool, though, in there. Stonebrain was never drawn, so definitely cannot really speak to the other cards that we saw. But, um, yeah, interesting, interesting deck. Uh, I think this list is nice. That's going to be it for me uh, today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe uh, button on the way out. And I'll see you in the next video, folks. Take care. Bye-bye.